Rub up your engines! Jordanius von Rhodes says, Scotty, what do you think of a 99 to 04 Jeep Grand Cherokee, specifically the L6 4.0 and the V8 4.7 variants? Okay, not a Jeep fan these days, but that was before Fiat had taken over the company. Those six cylinder, four liter engines can run forever. I've seen those things with four or 500,000 miles. The engines are fantastic. And the 4.7 V8s, they're also very strong engines. Now, the problem with both of those vehicles, and especially the V8, is they are tremendous. Tremendous, tremendous gas hogs. Jeeps were one of the biggest traded in vehicles when some of these places had cash for clunkers programs because they got such horrible gas mileage and as they aged they broke. It was like the most traded in vehicle on that cash for clunkers program. So that tells you something about it. But if you're talking about an older one and it doesn't have outrageous miles, you can get them cheap and it might be a nice knock around vehicle. You don't buy a vehicle like that and think, hey, I'm going to put 20,000 miles on it. Use it as an everyday driver. Now, they're not made for that. If you want a weekend touring, you can find a good one with lower mileage. Hey, have some fun with it. Civic CRX Honda says, Scotty, what are your thoughts on the 1989 Honda CRX petrol manual transmission? I'm looking to buy it. Okay, those were great cars back in the day. It's still running. It shows that how well made it was. 31 year old car. <laughs> That's an old car. If you want something as a knock around car and it runs and it shifts good, doesn't overheat, you don't see a bunch of smoke come out of the exhaust burning oil when you're driving it, go ahead, don't pay much for it. It's not worth all that much money. But don't think you can buy a car like that and drive it 20,000 miles a year without spending a lot of money. When cars are 31 years old, all the rubber's old, you're going to have to eventually replace it all. Depends on what you're going to do. If you get it cheap, it could be a fun knock around car, yes. But don't do like some of my customers and think, oh, I can get a good price on that and then. It gets good gas mileage, and I'll start driving it as my regular commuter car. No, not a smart move, because all that rubber stuff is going to start breaking, and you can get parts for them, because it's a Honda, yeah, but you're going to be fixing it all the time. I try to find something newer if you wanted an everyday dependable car, but if you want a fun little knock-around toy, go ahead and get it. Just don't pay that much. They're not worth that much money when they're that old, and they're just a run-of-the-mill Honda product. They mass produce you know, hundreds of thousands of those things. Shitter Boy says, Scotty, I recently acquired a 2001 Mitsubishi. Montero Sport with 180,000 miles of misfire in one of the cylinders. I'm going to do a tune-up, but should I drive it till the wheel falls off or get rid of it? Well, that depends. Now, you said you acquired it. If you got it for nothing, drive it until the wheels fell off. If you bought it, hopefully you didn't pay much for it because V6 Monteros, the, the engines and transmissions with 180,000 miles are on their last legs, and you will put a small fortune in it. If you did pay any kind of money for it, I'd say get rid of it immediately before you start throwing money into it. Do tune it up and pray that the misfire is a spark plug or spark plug wire or something like that. Don't put any money into the engine. If you find out the head gasket's gone, get rid of it immediately. Do not try to fix that. Putting a head gasket in one of those V6 Monteros, yeah, that can cost you anywhere from 12 hundred to thirty five hundred dollars and that's if the rest of the engine isn't damaged so don't go too far and if it, you get that misfire gone what the heck why not drive it till the wheel falls off if you have no money or very little money involved in it i hope you didn't pay much acorn 25 says is it okay to spray at reseal on a cv axle boot to keep it supple yes the at205 reseal is a rejuvenator of rubber it doesn't really do anything to any other <laughs> materials but it's great for rubber rubber. So if you spray it on, it will keep the rubber rejuvenated so it won't crack as much. I personally do that on my own cars. Some guys will spray them on the radiator hoses too. Here's a caveat for that. Radiator hoses, as crazy as it sounds, they actually crack and deteriorate from the inside out. You might have a car that's 15 years old and the outside looks okay, but the inside's all starting to go bad. If you got a car that old, take one of the hoses off and look inside. You see it's all cracked, Replace it then. But for the CV rubber boots, sure. There's really no pressure on them. There's no pressure that's pushing out like on a radiator hose. And they wear out from the outside because the inside's coated with grease. So, yeah, actually, it's a good idea to keep them lasting as long as possible. Bradley Nolan says, I'm considering buying a 2016 Lexus NX with 80,000 miles with a 2-liter turbo. Would this be a good vehicle to last? The 2-liter turbo is a smaller engine with a turbocharger on it. Now, Toyotas make good engines, yes. But there's no way. A turbocharged four-cylinder engine will last as long as a normally aspirated six-cylinder engine. There's so much less strain. I've seen those six-cylinder Lexus engines with 300,000 miles on them, and they still don't burn oil. Never seen a four-cylinder turbo get even half that before they started burning a bunch of oil. So it can be an okay car for driving around if you're really baby cars. 
but if you drive them hard, you're better with a six. It's how you drive. If you're a real fast driver, have your foot on the accelerator, I get a six. I wouldn't get a four turbo because it will wear out faster. There's no doubting that. Keith W says, is a 2013 Ford Taurus any good? It depends on two things. One, the transmissions were somewhat weak. You'd want, if you're thinking about buying one, have a mechanic to get his fancy scan tool, road test it, check the transmission data, see if the transmission is in good shape. Did somebody actually take care of it? If it was taken care of, it could be a decent car. Now it's 17 years old, so one, don't pay much money for it. It's not worth anything. It's not, it'll never be a collector's item or anything. If it's got like 150, 60,000 miles, it's probably all worn out. I wouldn't buy it at all, unless it was 500 bucks or something. But if it was lower mileage and the mechanic said it was a good car, it could be decent. Just don't pay too much money for it. Nobody pays too much money for a 17 year old car, unless it's some kind of collector's item. Default Skin 2018 says, Scotty, is it a good idea to run an open thermostat that's stuck? My car seems to run well. The thermostat, when it's shut, lets the engine warm up faster, then it opens up. If yours is stuck open, you may not even notice the difference in the summer when it's hot outside, because it opens up anyways. You live up north, it's not going to run well when it gets cold because then the engine is going to run too cold. How you can tell whether it's going to damage the car or not is watch the temperature gauge in your car. Let's say your temperature gauge normally runs right in the middle. If it continues to run right in the middle after it warms up, sure, it's not going to hurt anything. But when it's really cold outside and the thermostat's stuck open, it won't run in the middle anymore. It'll run way colder. And an engine that runs really cold is bad for two reasons. One, it doesn't get up to operating temperature. It's going to get worse gas mileage. But running at that lower temperature can actually damage the engine bearings and stuff over time. Now, I'm talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of miles. But now let's say you lived in Australia where it was hot all the time. Eh, as long as the temperature gauge ran in the middle while you warmed it up, it eh, wouldn't, wouldn't hurt the car at all. It's the temperature gauge that matters. You watch that gauge, and if it doesn't run normal, you'd want to put another one in because they're made to run best at the normal temperature they're designed for, not too cold. James Tompkins says, I bought a 2016 Camry XSE with 45,000 miles. After having a bad experience with the 2015 Chrysler 200C, traded in a Chrysler for a Camry, and I'm happy. Smart move. You know, those Chrysler 200 Cs, they don't even make them anymore. They were rolling piles of junk. That's when Fiat had taken over, and they had a lot of Italian parts. I rented one once just to see what they were like. I thought, phenomenal gas mileage. I got 40-something miles a gallon on the highway. No arguing that. But it was a tinny piece of junk, and it was one of those Fiat automatic transmissions, too. And it shifted horridly, even though it only had like 12,000 miles on it. So you made a smart move there. I, I agree with you. <laughs> you didn't go from the frying pan into the fire. You went from the frying pan onto a nice couch. <laughs> that was a smart move. Seven 47 Flyer says, hey Scotty, I never changed the tranny fluid on my 03 Corolla with the standard transmission, only 35,000 miles. It shifts great. Should I change it or leave it alone? Okay, well, it's got a standard transmission. So, I mean, you can leave it alone now. Uh, standard transmissions are completely different than automatic transmissions. An automatic transmission, as you're driving, the fluid dynamics shift it. That goes by pressures and the friction that's in the fluid to make the car dry. It has to be clean. It can clog up little holes, not shift right. A standard transmission just has gears. You're shifting it with your own hands. The only thing that goes on inside a standard transmission is there's standard transmission fluid and it's splash lubrication. The gear spinning, pick it up and throw it all inside and it lubricates it by splash. So it's not that important that it is perfectly clean. Now, if you want to be a fanatic, you could change the standard transmission fluid every 80,000 miles or something. That's what I do in my own cars. It's only splash lubrication. It's not that important. And you only have 35,000 miles, even though it's 17 years old. I wouldn't worry about it. But when you get 80, 90,000 miles, that changes the fluid. It's easy. There's a drain plug and an ad plug. You drain it, it all drips out. Then you go to the ad plug and you pour it in until it starts coming back out the ad plug and it's full. Really simple job to do. Lane the plane asks, hey, my mom's car wasn't in the path of the tornadoes in Dallas, but she was on the edge. A tree limb fell and nearly crushed her car. All that came out of it was dirt and leaves on the paint and cracked case on her left taillight. Is there anything else she should look for? She drives it around. Fix the taillight that's cracked and stuff. You might get a ticket. If it shines in people's faces, it can be harassment there. As long as it runs okay and it didn't get any water into the car, you really shouldn't have to worry about anything other than the paint being scratched and stuff like that. You got lucky on that one because it didn't crunch down. A lot of times you say that's a 
2015 Infinity, if they get a big tree on them, they'll just total the car because the body work will be more than the car is worth being a five-year-old Infinity. So at least she got out lucky there and she can still drive the car around. I would say park further away from trees. Don't park right under the trees with big limbs on them if things are falling down and crashing around you. When we have uh, hurricanes here in Houston, you know what I do? I actually pull my cars out into the front of the house on the street because it doesn't flood where I am but my driveway has big trees in it and I don't want the trees falling down one time we did have a tree fall right onto my driveway it was a long time ago when I wasn't a complete slob like I am today and my garage had enough room that my car was parked in the garage so it turns out that my old Toyota Corolla SF5 was parked in the garage one tree landed in front of it I couldn't get it out luckily I have side entrances to the garage because it was blocked and I went and I got my chainsaw and cut it into pieces so I could get the car <laughs> Always said the storm's coming. Don't get near trees. Park your car away from them. It's a smart thing to do. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.